Good morning, it's Rochelle, Legacy Home and Garden. Guess what we're doing today? Okay, have you racked your brain? I'll give you a hint. Here is a, a large baking dish. And here's a stick of butter. And I'm actually have this baking dish lined with foil and I'm buttering the foil. Why on earth would I do that? Because today we are making peppermint rock candy. Simple as pie, less than 10 minutes-ish. I'm gonna show you how to do it. Come along, let's have some fun. All right guys, the very first thing we have to do is you're gonna take a pan um, you wanna do like about a 15 by 10, something like that. It has to have an edge on it. It doesn't have to be this deep, but this is the only one I had. I have my cookie sheets and stuff, you know, but those cookie sheets, they don't really have um, the lip on them and I don't want my candy uh, rolling out onto the counters. So, I took this little bit bigger baking dish. You know, this dish is so freaking amazing. Look at it. And it's got these awesome handles on it. I bought this baby at a garage sale for a buck about, geez, three or four years ago. It's been amazing. Anyway, it comes in handy for all kinds of stuff. Today, we are going to use it for our peppermint rock candy. Now, what I, I wanna tell you is these are the only ingredients you need. You need a pan, you need some aluminum foil, okay? Um, you need butter, and you need corn syrup, light corn syrup. You're gonna use the clear, not the brown, like a caro syrup. You need that. You need three and three-fourths cup of sugar. You need one cup of water. You need some red food coloring. You need some peppermint um, oil. Okay, guys. Done and done. Buttered and set aside. Let's go through this together. Come on over to the stove. Hey guys, for peppermint, this is the great part about this recipe. You can make it peppermint, you can make it cinnamon, you can make it lemon, you can make it orange. You can make it whatever flavor you like. Um, I used to make this all a little bit around the holiday times. Uh, Holiday times when my kids were little. I honestly have not made this in absolute years. And I was scrolling through some of my social sites the other day. And a friend of mine posted this recipe. And I thought, oh my gosh, I haven't made that forever. I want to try it. So easy. Here's what you need. You need, first of all, you kind of want a heavy duty. This is an old uh, saucepan that I got <laughs> at the Goodwill for 25 cents. But I got it because it was real heavy duty and I like that. So, what you need is one cup of water, okay? You need three and three-fourths cup of sugar, all right? Then you're going to need one, excuse me, and a fourth cup of light carol syrup. You're going to need a teaspoon of red food coloring, Okay, and then you're gonna need a teaspoon of your oil, whether it's cinnamon, peppermint, orange, doesn't matter, whatever flavor you want. That's it, guys. You're gonna put these ingredients, the water, the sugar, everything, come on, come on, watch me do it. Okay, guys, little tidbit for you. You can do this if you want to, but you don't have to. As far as my stove goes, when I'm cooking candies and messy stuff, I put aluminum foil under my burners. This is a gas stove. Then I just cut, a, cut out around it there, so I, I do fine. But just to, so when I drop all this, if I drop sticky gooey stuff on here, it don't matter. Anyway, here we go. We're gonna put one cup of water in the pan. Then we're going to add the sugar. It's just gonna go right in there. Okay, then we're gonna put in the food coloring, I mean, not the food coloring, the corn syrup. And I like to use my rubber spatulas on this because then it uh, doesn't have a tendency to stick so much. 
We're gonna put that in there and we're gonna put our food coloring in. That's right. And we're gonna mix, here's what we look like. You see that? We're just gonna start mixing all this together. That is pretty, 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 pretty. Look at that. That pretty? Beautiful red. Okay, now what we're gonna do, guys, we've got, <laughs> we actually have everything in here. So we are going to bring this to a boil, and we kinda want it over medium heat. We don't wanna be on a big, strong, strong heat. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring this to a boil, and we're just kinda trying to uh, get that candy going right there. It shouldn't take too long, but I wanna bring you over and, and show you here. Can you see that or am I mess? Am I just making you a dizzy mess? <laughs> oh, making candy, isn't it fun? What we're trying to do is just melt that, uh, get that sugar dissolved and uh, get that corn syrup uh, boiling. Once it gets to a boil, we are going to cover it um, and let it cook on that medium boil for about three minutes. So I don't wanna keep you here while I'm doing that, uh, but I do want to bring you back, so hang on. Okay guys, ladies and gents, kids of all ages, this is all of our ingredients. We're on a medium heat, okay? You see how beauty that is? Just beauty. We're on a medium heat, okay? And what we're gonna do is we are going to let this um, continue to cook all by itself. You don't have to do anything to this, guys. You just let this cook um, until you get a nice boil. You stir it occasionally, just occasionally stir that, um, and you're gonna get a nice rolling boil going on it. Then we're gonna cover it and let it continue to boil for three minutes. Now you can see around my edge here, I'm getting a little boiling going. See the little bubbles going? That's not quite ready yet, um, but that's our goal. Hey, welcome back to the candy making. Look, we got our boil going here, you see that? Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this lid on it. Now my lid doesn't fit 100% secure because I bought this at the Goodwill, the pan, and it didn't have a lid on it. So I'm using this one, it fits pretty good. Now, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna set my timer for three minutes and we're gonna leave it just like this, untouched, for three minutes. Come on back and I'll show you what we do next. Okay, guys, it's been three minutes. Okay, we're gonna take this lid off. Look at that, isn't that awesome? Woohoo! Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna keep it on the medium to high heat, and this here is a candy thermometer, and I want it to get to 300. Now, I'm gonna tell you a little secret. You're just gonna put your candy thermometer in here, okay? When I was a girl, my mom baked and did everything in her kitchen without a candy thermometer or anything else. When she did candy, she used a teaspoon and ice cold water. And when she was trying to get her items to what we're trying to reach, a hard uh, crack stage, she was just watching it boil, watching it boil. And then after a minute or so, she'd scoop in and take, she'd take just a little bit of that candy and she'd put a drop in that, in that ice cold water and then she'd look at it down there at the bottom and she'd say, nope, that's not right, that's still too soft. And she'd wait a little bit longer and she'd take another scoop and drip it in there until her candy was what she thought was at a hard crack stage, um, which is your 300 or, you know, a hard ball or a soft ball or a soft thread. You can do all of that without a candy thermometer, just with a dish, a teaspoon and some cold, cold water. Of course, nowadays we have all this fancy stuff and honestly, this is my first ever candy thermometer. When I made this for my children, uh, 
30 years ago, 35 years ago, I used what my mom did, cold, cold water and a teaspoon. However, candy thermometer's nice and a lot easier, but you can do this without a candy thermometer and that's what I wanted you to know. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take it again, just put another little drop in there like that. And you can see it's not at the hard ball, but it is kind of at, at I mean, it's getting a little firmer in that cold water. Uh, so this is a way that you can do it if you need to. So don't go out and spend a lot of money on a candy thermometer unnecessarily. Hi. <laughs> I just wanted to share with you, there are other ways to do things if you don't have the fancy stuff. I mean, I'm, I'm cooking in a pan I paid 25 cents for. You know, I've got a little dish of ice cold water that I can still check it with. You know, I do have a candy thermometer. I'm going to pour my candy in a pan I paid a dollar four years ago. So it is possible, guys. You don't have to have fancy stuff to make some candy. Um, so this stage should take about 20, 25 minutes to get to the temperature we want. Right now, we are at what's called the soft ball thread stage so we're at about two something did you see that in there did you see how that's kind of threading threading in there you see it so that's the soft let me turn it this way for you see this is a soft ball but it's kind of in a thread see that that's the soft ball thread okay I'm not going to make you stick around here for 25 minutes while our candy gets hard. But I do want to tell you, I appreciate you watching how we make this fun little candy. I sure hope you try it. But I'll bring you back in a second when we're uh, going to test it again. And uh, let's see where we're at. Hey, welcome back. Uh, we're up to about... 240, 245-ish on our candy thermometer. But, as you know, I told you about the cold water and the teaspoon. So, I want to show you um, what it's going to look like when I take a dip out of here into my ice cold water. Because we're just above, like, the soft ball. So, it should definitely form a soft ball in this water. Um, and then that tells you, okay, if you don't have a th thermometer, what you're trying to get to is past the hard ball stage, past the soft crack into the hard crack, because this is cinnamon rock candy. But if you were doing something and it told you that you wanted to get to the soft ball uh, stage, this is what this is what it is. Okay, I'm gonna dip down in here and get me a little bit of this candy, all right? And I'm just gonna pour it off my spoon. I don't need a whole lot. I'm going to let it drop in my water here. Come on, drop in. There we go. Now, y'all see that? Look at that. It formed formed right in there. And I'm trying to do it so you see that right there. Now, it's soft. It's soft. It's not hard yet. So, you're past the softball stage, all right? And you're moving up. You're moving on up. But, I mean, you're not past the softball stage, I'm sorry. You're at the softball stage. See? Nice and soft. Softball stage. Okay? So, if you're cooking something and you need to get to softball, that's it. And you did it without a thermometer, just cold water and a teaspoon. All right, we've cooked just a couple minutes since I saw you last. That's all, just a couple minutes. And now we're at what's called the firm ball stage, and we're going to do it the exact same way. The difference is it's still going to feel soft, but it's firm. Does that make sense? So you can't take it and like squish it real soft like I did before. So I want to show you. I'm going to do the same exact thing. I'm almost to the next step, which is hard ball, but this is firm ball, and I'm doing the same exact thing. I'm just dripping that candy off of there. It's still boiling. Okay, and then I'm just going to drop it in here. Okay, now, y'all see that? Look at that. But here, now, now before I was really having to pull that up off the bottom, now I can just take it off. Okay, now, here's the candy. This is hard ball. I can still form it, 
but I can't smoosh it like before, okay? So this is your hard ball. It's your next step. And you, when you do this with cold water and a teaspoon, you're gonna feel it for yourself. Now I know looking at it probably looks about the same, but you can definitely feel that this is a firmer ball than the one before. So you're on the right track. You just keep on going. And don't give up. We'll be coming, this is firm ball. So first you have the soft ball stage. Then you have the firm ball stage. Next thing is gonna be the hard ball stage, okay? Now I'm just gonna take this, I'm gonna eat it. Now, it's sweet, but there's no real uh, flavor because we haven't put our oil in yet. But hang on, because we're gonna do that. Okay guys, it's been a couple minutes and we're gonna test again. And this time, what we're looking for is the hard ball stage, okay? So we're doing the same thing. We're just gonna dip our spoon in there. I got my cold water. Just gonna do it like that. See that little tiny ball right there? That is definitely hard. Look at that. Can you see it? It's hard. Now I'm gonna make a little bit larger one so you can see better, but that is hard. That is hard. <laughs> so you're, we are definitely getting there. I want to make a little bit bigger one so you can really see what I'm talking about. So I'm really going to put a goodly amount right there. Woohoo! Look at that. Now I'm going to, oh, there it is. That is hard candy right there, guys. See that? That is hard. All right. So you can definitely feel it. And hopefully you're able to see the differences in what I'm showing you. And this is just how it, it's strung in there, but this is definitely hard, okay? Hard ball. So I'm gonna mush it together for you. But it's hard to mush it together because it wants to break because it's hard ball. Um, so there you go, hard ball stage right there. Hear that? I'm knocking on my thing with it. Now I'm not gonna chew on this one because that'll probably just get stuck in my molar or something real fast, but that is hard ball stage. So we're, the next stage we're looking for is a soft crack. And to be honest with you, I've never done a soft crack in water, so it'll be the first time we're gonna do it together. All right, guys, on, according to the candy thermometer, we're at the soft crack stage, so we're gonna do it together. Dip my spoon in there like I have been doing before, and I'm just gonna, Drop it in here and let's see what soft crack stage looks like. You see it in there all stringy? Okay, I'm going to take it out. Oh, it comes right out like that. Okay, now. Okay, I see. It breaks. It breaks and it's like a little, see there? Look. So, soft crack. Okay, so... We can't no longer form it into a ball or anything, which is good. Tells me we're on the right path, but there's my soft crack. You see that? Soft crack. I'm going for hard crack. All right, guys, it says I'm at hard crack stage. Now I kind of have to move quickly because I've got, uh, but we're going to see what hard crack looks like in the water because I honestly don't know. Oh, I see. Okay. Can you see it? I'm trying my hardest. Oh yeah, you'll feel it, guys. You will feel it. As soon as you start to touch it, I start touching it in the water, it's just falling apart. Now, we have to get our candy thermometer out of here. Hold on. Got me a handy dandy little bowl. And I'm gonna take this candy thermometer out. And be careful, because if you're using it, it can be hot. Just set that aside for a second. Okay, now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take you with me. Hold on, we're gonna pour, this is our oil, okay? And we're gonna pour our oil in here, and, um, well, first we're gonna turn it off, because it says take it off the heat. So I turned it off since I have a gas stove. If you have electric, take it off that burner. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put our cinnamon, or excuse me, peppermint in oil in here, and now, and we're gonna stir that up, okay?
I just, oh, that smells heavenly, you guys. Absolutely heavenly. Now, what I'm going to tell you is oils can be strong. So you're going to want to keep your face away from that heat and that coming straight up on you. Okay? So we're just going to mix that oil in there real good. All right, everybody, we're at the last stage. I'm over here at the counter now. I've got my candy. I feel like I've got my peppermint stirred in there real good. So the last thing we're going to do is we are going to pour this candy into that pan that we prepared. Okay? We're just going to pour it in there. Look how beautiful that is. Look at how beautiful. Oh, my goodness. That is beauty. Right there is beauty. Okay. Okay. Folks, we're going to let this sit. For about 45 minutes and really let it cool down and get hard. I'm going to bring you back and show you the very last step. I hope you're enjoying this candy making as much as I am. I tell you, it has been a minute since I've made candy. And even though I have the thermometer, I have to admit, I have enjoyed doing it with the cold water. Um, maybe it's just because that's how I've always done it. But having the candy thermometer, I will admit, has made it a lot easier. But it is totally possible without one. So hang on, and I'll have a kitchen tip for you at the very end. Welcome back. It's been 45 minutes, and our candy is ready to come out of the pan. And uh, we're going to do the finishing touches. So I really want you to come along. We're going to need three things. I have this here as my meat mallet. And that's what I do for, it's heavy. It's got some weight to it. I'm going to need this to crack my candy. This here has got powdered sugar in it. Okay. And I'm going to need that to sprinkle on my candy. Come along and see how I get this hard, rock hard candy out of this pan to do the finishing touch. Okay, here we go. We're gonna take the candy right here. You see we lined it in this foil uh, beforehand. So we're simply gonna take that out. Take our pan and move it out of the way. Take our candy here. We're gonna turn it upside down, okay? Just like that. And we're just gonna peel off this foil. And if I did it, if I buttered well, we won't have any problems. Okay, so this foil will just come right off if I did my job good. Voila! Look at there. Okay, now what we're going to do is try not to make too big of a mess. Going to grab our little mallet here and we're going to start crunching our candy. Woohoo! Look at that. Now we're going to break it in some little pieces. Listen, if you don't have a mallet, don't stress about it. Get your, go out and get your hammer and put a towel or something on it. And I don't want these in great big pieces. I kind of want them in little bite-sized pieces, you know. So, oops, cures me a little tiny one. Oh yeah. Look at that. Some of these are a little bit bigger, that's fine. Just break it however you want. Look at that. Now, here's some bigger pieces here, so we're gonna break those down just a little bit. All right, we got our rock candy. Now what we're gonna do Take our powdered sugar. Isn't that lovely? Isn't that just beautiful? Look at that. Christmas candy ready and ready. Now I'm going to tell you a secret. A lot of people going to sit here. And piece by piece, turn this candy over and sprinkle the other side. Now, I'm not going to do that. You know what I'm going to do? Is I'm going to take a Ziploc baggie. 
And I'm gonna put all this candy in here and then I'm gonna put the powdered sugar in it and shake it all up and get it really, really covered. But I wanted to show you, if you want it like this, you can do that and just turn, start turning everything over and sprinkle it again, okay? Hey guys, this is real good. I didn't put enough peppermint in it, so next time I would add more peppermint, but it's still good. The pieces are a little bit still too big for me that I originally cut, so I wanna show you what I'm doing. Okay, so what I'm doing is, these pieces are still a little bit too big for me. Um, I like more, like a little piece of candy just to suck on. Um, so I'm break, I went ahead and took it off the cutting board. I put it in here so I could really bang on it. After all, it is rock candy. Um, so that I can just kind of push it around and make some of these smaller pieces that I want. Get ready for the noise. Now, I have it sitting on a granite stone. That's just not necessary as long as you have it on a firm surface. I could have it sitting over here um, on my countertop. But you want to have something. Now, these kids, they'll probably want bigger pieces. So, I'm not going to make them all too tiny. This makes about two pounds. Break it up however the size you want. I'll bring you back to show you the final product. Hey everybody, I'm finished. This is my beautiful rock candy. I hope you can see it well in the lighting. Is that too bright? Can you see it all right? Let me try to adjust the lighting in here. I don't, cause I'm not quite sure if you can, if you can see that well or not. Let's look now, can you see it now? Oh yeah, look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Beautiful peppermint rock candy. And this is great to put into little containers and um, give as a Christmas gift. A little thank you to someone, your um, mail delivery person, your FedEx person, your UPS person. It's great um, in little containers to give to your coworkers. Um, put it in uh, stockings for your kids or grandkids. Or make just one little batch and set it out at your next um, get together. Now remember, I did mine in red and peppermint. I feel that freshness of the peppermint, it's not real strong. So next time I do this, it called for one teaspoon and I only put a half a teaspoon in, I know, because I was so fearful that it would be too strong. Um, so next time, I'll do the whole teaspoon. But if you just want a light hint of peppermint, just a light fresh mint, go with half because it's still very nice, but not overpowering. Next thing is you can do this with orange. You can do it with lemon. You can do it with cinnamon, any oil that you like. Um, if you do citrus like orange, use orange food coloring. If you do lemon, do use yellow food coloring. Just change the color if you want to go with the type of candy that you're making. So I promised you a little tip. Now, you probably already know all of this, but, hi, you're gardening, right? You have all of your great um, herbs. You've got um, chives, you've got sage, you've got onion, you've got garlic, you've got everything under the sun. Keep those herbs, when you cut them, in some fresh water on your counter, cool water. Don't be putting them in the refrigerator where they'll get limp. But let's say you have an overabundance of those. Cut them up. Most recipes start with onion, garlic, etc., etc. Take the ones that you have. Maybe it's just onion and garlic. Uh, dice those up. Maybe it's sage. Maybe it's thyme. Maybe it's rosemary. Whatever it is. Let's say it's rosemary, thyme, and, and um, uh, pick another herb. Chop them up, put them in the ice trays. Remember ice trays in the old days when you had to fill them with water, put them in your freezer? Don't go out and buy brand new ones. Check out your Goodwill or yard sales. Find some used ones, clean them really good, sterilize them. Use those guys. 
any kind of mold, put your herbs in there, chopped up, your fresh, dry herbs. You can even do it if you buy them at the store, guys. And fill your tray with olive oil, freeze it. When it's froze, pop them out, throw them in a Ziploc freezer bag or container, pop them in your freezer. And the next time you're making anything on your stove, you're starting with olive oil, onion, garlic, basil, whatever it is, pop a cube in, Got you, you're already started. That was one tip. Here's another one. You ever have these spatulas? Have you ever checked to see if the top comes off? Because in a lot of cases, your top will come off. See, you can pull that right off. Don't forget to do that. Because when you um, use these spatulas, look, I took the lid off. Okay, you wanna make sure you're cleaning this part of it. And you wanna make sure you're cleaning in here. Okay, because when you wash them, whether it's in the dishwasher or whatever, water collects in here. Okay, now don't be grossed out if the first time you take it off and you're like, oh my God, don't freak out. Just clean it, clean it good. But I always pop mine apart when I wash them in the dishwasher. That way I'm sure to get clean in here, but you know, it doesn't always dry. Can't get a towel in there. I use a Q-tip, get that moisture out of there. Make sure it's really good and dry before I put it back together. Cause guess what guys, mold can grow in there. So my tip for you today don't forget about taking the heads off your spatulas if they're removable and cleaning in there. Don't freak out. Don't put it back together when it's still wet. Grab a Q-tip and dry it out, okay? Hey, guys. It's Rochelle with Legacy Home and Garden. Thanks for hanging out with me today. We made some rock candy and uh, had a little kitchen tip for you there. If you like my channel and you like what you see, please hit the subscribe button. And leave me a comment if you have a different way of doing this. Tell me. Show me what you're using. I tried to include tips today for you. Uh, sorry, eating some candy off my finger. I uh, tried to include some tips for you today to think about if you don't have the handiest things that you could still do it. Also, keep a sink of hot, hot water. Because as you're going along with this candy, sticky stuff, get those utensils and things in that hot water right away. Don't let them sit for later. So don't forget that. But I hope you enjoyed making candy with me. I enjoyed having you in my kitchen today. Thank you so much. I appreciate you so much. Please leave me a comment. Let me know that you were here. I'm going to go for now. It's Rochelle with Legacy Home and Garden. I hope you make your own form of rock candy and enjoy it. Whether it's peppermint, cinnamon, orange, lemon, whatever it is, make it and enjoy it. Until next time, Rochelle, Legacy Home and Garden.